I know, it's been a while. I do apologise. Once I got back from Gran Canaria, fully intending to start making some videos again, broke my laptop and was, uh, was without for a few weeks. And then things have just been busy. But I'm finally doing it. I'm finally getting around to making videos, mostly of stuff from my trip to Gran Canaria, and then hopefully of some interesting cycling uh, around the UK. Now I'm back. So I thought I'd start with what turned out to be my favourite um, climb in Gran Canaria, weirdly. And I think it's just because I like the unlikely climbs. Do you know what I mean? A, a lot of the stuff I post isn't necessarily like uh, the big headline glamour climbs. So it's not Valley of Tears. It's maybe not one you'll have heard of at all. It's just out of Mas Palomas where we stayed through this town called El Tablero. And it was a dead end climb. Uncharacteristically for me, it's not particularly steep, averaging just under 5%, but yeah, it goes on for almost 15k, uh, which is kind of typical for how long the climbs around here uh, can be. And the nice thing, the reason I loved it, part of the reason I loved it, is because it ends with a real sting in the tail, a nice 11% uh, average, uh, one or two kilometers at the end, just to make sure you're tired. So the town behind me there was uh, El Tablero, which is much less touristy than the Mas Palomas and the sort of places most people stay. And you end up going up through El Salobra. And at first, this climb's like relatively uh, steady. You're looking at like two to five percent, but there's a few steep pitches in the town uh, and it makes it, I guess, quite hard to pace early on. You have to be quite conscious that, yeah, this is this is 15 kilometers. This climb is going to take a while uh, to get into. So I'm sharing this, a ride that my dad and I did uh, nominally as a rest day uh, because I just thought it was interesting and a bit different. On this day, I had promised that I would be back early. It was the only day uh, that Rhiannon was bothered about me not being out with my bike all day because there was a place she'd seen that did uh, incredible looking cinnamon buns. And I said, uh, we'd go and get some this day. We were going to get there early. Uh, so yes, I had a time commitment and it was meant to not be that hard of a day. When my dad said, should we do this rather than the coast road? I had gone and done this once already. And I said, well, that's, it's not going to be a rest day then to do it in the time <laughs> that needs be. So I just tried to keep a lid on it a little bit. I tried to spend very little time in threshold and really do a bit more time in a in tempo but as you can see to maintain any speed when you're getting up to these double digit gradient pitches uh, that is that is quite tough so i just kind of hammered it now i really wanted to do this area because when i'd come and explored a little bit on day one i hadn't seen a single other cyclist up here and you know the main route up the volcano and the really the famous climbs soria serenity etc they can feel a bit like um a bit like mallorca in that ev everyone is out doing them, a bit Disneyland, a bit contrived. Uh, whereas this felt like a very authentic road that went up to some plantations that people needed to do. Um, there were no particularly glamorous switchbacks. There was um, patches of unapologetically poor road, but generally it was pretty good. And it was clearly uh, a road that served a purpose. So the good bit doesn't really start until you leave the town of El Salobra up, up this hill. Um, I've never studied Spanish in my life, so if I absolutely butcher everything, I apologise um, and I own it. I, I am not pretending I have any idea how to pronounce any of this. So the weather was um, absolutely classically Canarian. It was beautiful warm morning but it wasn't hot actually it was about 20 degrees just perfect and as you can see we got out quite early still got that nice low sun uh, which just leads to these beautiful long shadows lovely views and nice clear sky around this corner is where this climb really gets good for me um this first even like four or five k of the climb is really just getting out to the good bit on my first day when I came and did this climb, I'd done the Agueras loop with uh, with my dad and I said, oh, I want to explore a bit more. And I spotted that this road was just, just started next to it and I thought, well, I'll just go up there. And I, you know, people who know me will know that I am a bit of a worrier. I, I catastrophize quite a lot. And I was thinking, it's really hot. I'm going to get sunburned. I've not got much water. And 
it's easy to feel very isolated very quickly uh, on Gran Canaria, even though it's not that big. And I, I had images of me being a stupid tourist who goes off the beaten track, uh, gets lost, gets sunstroke, and just like dies at the side of the road. Um, so I didn't go all the way up, even though that's absolutely absurd. It's only like 10k from a town, and I had my Garmin and everything. Um, but I got to a place that looked exceptional looked looked really a beautiful st place to stop um took a video and yeah a picture and i vowed to come back so it was nice to be coming back today um yeah there's lots of open road like this as in um it's just road ahead of you and, and open land either side and if you're familiar with Gran Canaria, you'll know um, the Soria climb. Soria? Soria? I'll get that wrong every time I say it. Um, and you'll know that if you come from the coast road up to there, you spend like 10 or 15k going through a valley before you get to it. And that valley, you're going very slightly uphill. Well, this road that I'm riding in this video is the top. So to the right of you, there's a load of mountains. This road is just riding along the ridge line on top of them so still from sea level but just up the ridge line to the top of those mountains and much later on there'll hopefully be a view where you can see down to the the valley road that goes on to soria at first it feels um it feels all very gradual although you do have surprising pitches like this where uh yeah you you want to get out the saddle you want to stamp you want to push but um you're normally rewarded with a false flat or even a flat or even a descent and then there's intermittent bits of road like this where because the camera's forward facing it doesn't do it justice but you basically ride over little ridges where to either side of you there's steep sided banks that go way down you feel you know quite precipitous it's it's quite like you're you're on top of the world really you're, you're on top of everything which uh it's a wonderful feeling for a hill climber. It really um, feels like your effort is, is paying off. Uh, but unfortunately on this holiday, I had to come to the realization uh, that I am scared of heights. So <laughs> that was uh, suboptimal at times. I'm fine with them within reason, but when you're on like a, a precipitous ridge line like that and there's strong crosswinds, um, yeah, I was a little bit uneasy to be honest with you. So this, this just teases you with seeing the next bit of climb and the next bit of climb and the next bit of climb. It's not one of those where you can, you can see the top from the bottom. Every corner you turn, you can see, I don't know, the next 800 meters. And, and every time you turn a corner, you can see, oh, there's a little bit of flat and then there's another steep pitch. Um, get to the top of the steep pitch, do a bit of descent, turn a corner, see the flat, see the steep, rinse and repeat. So I described this as being a bit like the steps, a very um, well-known local climb for me. But I can't tell you how little justice that does this. I hate the steps. It's my least favorite climb in North Wales. Horrible road, really boring climb, never gets that steep. I don't know why anyone enjoys it. This was just like the steps. If I was having a saucy dream about it, um, it was it was unbelievable. The weather helps, you know, in and out of the sunlight, suddenly getting up this 16, 18%, having to stamp here. It felt like a roller coaster. It felt, you know, properly like a roller coaster track. It was just such a laugh and unlike anything uh, that I could really hope to ride at home. The scenery, of course, is unlike anything else I've I've ever seen before. The the volcanic Canary Islands, and those of you familiar with Mallorca and Gran Canaria, I've no doubt uh, will be very familiar with it. But to me, it looks truly alien. And I am going to make more videos because every every day, every ride, I filmed almost all of. So I've got plenty of footage. I can't decide how much to share, but I'll do a little bit more about the general holiday. I just wanted to showcase this fabulous and probably lesser known road uh, as a first point but I know there's things to cover like oh I hired a bike and the villa I stayed in and why have we got on Gran Canaria not Tenerife did I like it more or less etc and um uh, truth, truth be told I'm not very interested in any of that stuff I'm just interested in showing you a cool road that I think um if you're watching my channel I think you'd probably love to ride the vast majority of you I assume 
Uh, that's why you're here. I think it's somewhere around here that's where I got to on, on the first day. So beyond that was just um, a little bit a little bit unknown to me. Um, as you can see, I'm with my dad in this video. I think we're in matching kit, our kit that we got from our Thailand tour, which was kind of fun. Uh, and of course, he's on an e-bike, which helps a lot for him. Um, keeping up with me up, up the pitches. And then, of course, on the descents of flats, it's giving him no assistance at all. But he's fine. He's a strong cyclist. We, we stay together anyway. When we did descents and these nice windy bits, on this road I never felt too nervous, but I was very nervous all holiday for various reasons, mostly because my brakes were reversed, of course, it's it's a European hire bike. Um, if you're not too familiar with the differences between bikes in the UK and Europe, they're pretty much the same, except um, on my look at home, the right hand brake lever is the front wheel that has most of the stopping power and on this European bike the left hand brake lever is the front wheel that has most of the stopping power. That meant if I needed to stop quickly, instinctively, I will put more pressure on the right than the left and on day one, hour one, coming down Aguerdes round a steep bend, I lost control of my back wheel without thinking. You know it's something I'm totally conscious of. But when you've got half a second because you're coming into a corner a bit hot and you go, well, I need to scrub a little bit of speed, you don't think it's not stuff you can consciously be aware of. And that was enough of a scare for me that all week I was just a little bit uncomfortable. And any of you will know that if you're nervous going into a corner, you're in far more danger. Um, if you see someone who's nervous going into a corner, so they take it bolt upright, not smooth, um, they're in so much more danger than someone who takes a corner nice and smooth with a good lean, but I couldn't get that out of my head. So that's what I was doing all week. Um, and so be it. I thought, you know what? I'd rather corner like a granny and get home um, happily without risk again, having, having nearly fucked up day one. So you can see ahead of me again, there's this same sort of um, profile, false flat, steep bit, round a corner. This must be step like eight or nine on this climb of this same pattern and and I just I didn't get bored of it it's like you know it, it slowly reveals its secrets to you but only if you put the work in to unlock them and the further up this climb I got the better and better the views got of course um, you know, the more expansive, the higher up these mountains we were, the more I could see the Valley of Aguerres to my right, um, the Valley of Soria to my left, uh, and the more I could uh, just enjoy the immersion of this incredible island. So far, the road surface here has been incredible. And uh, yeah, again, maybe I'll talk about this um, more in another video, but I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 because um, I'm a contrarian. I, I disagree a little bit with everything everyone's told me about this place, because some people say our oh, European roads are so much better than Wales and fucking hell, ride Gran Canaria. You, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Um, <laughs> lots of the road surfaces here are not good. On the other hand, people tell you, oh, you should have gravel bikes if you want to do stuff like Valley of Tears. Ah, nonsense. Just... I rode 25s and yeah, the road surfaces were bumpy and annoying, but they were fine. You really don't don't need 32s. Um, so I was I was somewhere in between. I would have liked much nicer, smoother roads, but they weren't um, the horrendous, unrideable roads that, that are advertised, except for one, which I will show you at some point. That little detail, that little tangent there, uh, was because so far this surface has been amazing. It's been, you know, the classic um, continental style, lovely smooth rolling tarmac, completely dry. We will get to a point where this road no longer offers that, but so far I must be 10k up it, and it's it's been dreamy. It's been truly lovely. Starting to get a bit anxious looking at the time, right? Because I've promised I'll be back at a certain time and we're going, will we make it to the top or do we need to turn around? But no, no, we think we're okay. We think uh, we think we'll be all right. But something looked a bit funny. Um, up and around this corner, we were going, is that road closed? Yeah, men in high vis. Um, it's not touristy. They don't speak English. They've just signaled that we should slow down and then they've waved us through. 
but it looks like they might be planning to close the road at some point. I just pushed that to the back of my mind. I thought, no, 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 it'll be fine. Just keep going. They've waved us through and we're happy. So yeah, fan fantastic. Now obviously we get to here and it looks like some big event on. They're actually filming a TV series. You could see like film cameras and stuff. Oh, I don't know if it's a TV series or a film or something, but yeah, filming. Great. This is a dead end, as I may have mentioned, so we have to come back through this on our way back down. No choice in the matter whatsoever, uh, but that's fine. Something I hope you've noticed from the footage is how exceptionally empty this road is. Now, I've not selectively edited this to get rid of evidence of cars to make it look like we had the road to ourselves. We really did. We probably saw five or six cars total. Um, while cycling up here and a few more on the way back down there's mitigating factors right it was it was early and this is spain so 10 o'clock people aren't up and about anyway um you can get that around a lot of the island but um more than say some of the the other climbs it was really quiet it was really lovely to barely see barely see anyone really have the road to ourselves um I certainly see footage, you know, when you see Mallorca, I just think, wow, it looks like a congested hellhole a lot of the time. And maybe there are options to avoid that like this, but one of the things I loved about this, it's a bit like I say about Cum Tegel, right? It may not be as good as Stullan, but the fact that it feels almost like my little secret um, <laughs> makes it feel special to me. This is obviously not my little secret. Other people know it. I know people who've climbed up it, but it's not as popular. Now we're in the final 2k, which wonderfully is 12% average. After all of that 2k at 12%, it's like you've climbed for 12 kilometers and someone goes, do you want to do the old bulk now? <laughs> it's, it's just stupid. Um, and it's at this point that the road decides, ah, I don't want to be smooth and help you. Um, I want to be rough as fuck uh, and not help at all. I love that. I love that it's unapologetically, stupidly hard to finish. It it gives it that real challenge feel. And as you go up and down these switchbacks, I can't stress enough how beautiful it is to either side. It's terrifying then. Like, you know, you're just on the side of a mountain. Elevation's about 800 metres at this point, but the valley behind me that you can't really see on these cameras is at uh, less than 100 meters elevation I believe so you know looking straight down 700 meters okay it's it's not the top of Mont Blanc but it's it's truly high it's pretty crazy uh, watching all of this and I just keep saying to my dad I think it's done soon but we'll know when we get there because he kept saying is this still the road like are we not done I was saying, no, no, you'll know. It becomes gravel. The road surface got worse, but it didn't become gravel yet. So I was saying, well, you know, I think we'll know when we get there. So as it is, we're just sort of pushing on into the dark because the route I've plotted didn't perfectly end at the end. So my Garmin got confused. It was trying to send me up a gravel climb, but not, uh, not at the end of the road, if that makes sense. I was really unsure of how to pace this because I'd done two what I'll call moderate days the day before, you know, sort of 70 to 80 miles or 120 to 140 K with somewhere like two or 3000 meters of elevation. And I was doing the Valley of Tears uh, tomorrow as you're watching this video. But on the other hand, I kept thinking, I'm only here for a week. Like it's, it's too short a time to not just love every day and smash it and, and enjoy the sun. But I don't want to ruin doing Valley of Tears um, by doing this. So I think you'll agree that I did an okay job of moderating myself. My heart rate isn't getting into the 170s, which is, you know, when I start really paying penalties. And my power is bobbling around upper tempo, lower threshold most of the time, unless I really have to get over a steep, steep pitch. Now, as I'm recording this voiceover, because I've put this on double speed, because I want you to see the whole steep bit at the end, um, 
the playback software is horrendous and I'm just seeing like every 10 seconds one snippet of what's going on. I apologise if things aren't, uh, aren't very smooth, but you get up into these high plantations and you're doing switchbacks and it's clear that this road exists because farmers need access to whatever they're growing up here and I, and I don't know what it was. Um, which is kind of a cool feeling that it's, you know, just a, a useful, productive road. And as we get to the end, the surface is, um, is truly dire. But I was really confident at this point, yeah, this, this must be the finish. We must be getting to the finish and pushing on for this final um, little bit of rise to, to sort of earn our reward. The unfortunate thing about this climb is um, it doesn't end at some iconic viewpoint with magnificent views back down the valley, although we did get some um, when I moved back down the climb a little bit. Uh, but you know, you know when it's over. I just loved it. I got to this point and I just thought, we're on top of the world and we don't have to share it with anyone. It's not like going up to Pico de las Nieves or, or even up to San Bartolome or something. I'm not sharing it with a tourist bus or or even other cyclists you know you get up here and you get it to yourself and yeah it's not the highest point and yeah it wasn't the hardest or the steepest climb it wasn't valley of tears it wasn't the top of the island um but it wasn't far off the quality of either of those things so all i can say is if you do come to gran canaria and you do um stay in mas palomas come and do this climb it's so worth it so there's the gravel there's a reminder of the profile. It took us about 48 minutes. I did 291 watts, so it's like 4.3 watts a kilo, give or take. So pretty, pretty tempo-y average. Hopefully I wouldn't pay too many penalties. I wanted to show you the whole descent as well. That's how much I loved this climb, but I just hope with a little bit of descending footage, God, I'm slow, aren't I? Um, you'll just see sort of the, the panoramic vistas uh, that we got and Sure enough, on my way back down. Oh dear. Oh dear, this is not what I need. I'm on a schedule. No ideal at all. So this man came over to us, very politely told us, no, they're in the middle of filming, you cannot come through here. Um, I pleaded with him and I said, how long until we can? And he said, oh, five or ten minutes, let me radio a colleague. I assume I'm getting all this through gestures. Um, he definitely wasn't speaking English to me. And they put a car on to guide us through um, sort of mid-filming uh, and we followed this car which was loads of fun I've never had an escort through a through a filming site before um, so yeah that, that was a laugh and me and my dad were just thinking oh, just make sure we're back and <laughs> draft this car as much as we can um, and get carried back through so I hope you've enjoyed I don't even know the name of this climb the, the segment just calls it G603 from El Tablero. Um, I'll call it the El Tablero climb. Here's the car waving us through. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you'll consider doing it if you uh, if you do find yourself in Gran Canaria. Um, it's only a 40k total ride from Maspalomas. So yeah, cheers for watching, guys.